What's going down, man? It's your boy, Donnie Houston. We celebrating three years of chopping it up right here on the Donnie Houston Podcast. Go to DonnieHoustonRail.com right now and get you one of these brand new Choppers t-shirts available in the mono black, tight white, in the gray type edition. What's going down, man? It's your boy, Donnie Houston. Hey, check it out, man. I got a, uh, a new job opportunity for y'all, man. Something real live, man. Check it out. If you want to learn how to install the internet cables, a fire alarm, a security access system, you know what I'm saying? You need a new trade. Need an OSHA 10 or an OSHA 30 safety certification? Hey man, they got you. Call Texas Training Center and Certifications at 281-962-0659 or simply go to www.ttcandc.com or on Instagram, tdcandc. You know what I'm saying? They located at 341 Columbia Memorial Parkway, Suite 341 E, that's out in Kima, Texas, 77565. You know what I'm saying? They offer hands on training for network cabling, low voltage trade, telecommunications, structured cabling, voice and data. Hey, man, all that. Uh, voice over internet protocol, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, no background check for training, man. Listen, call Texas Training Center and Certifications at 281-962-0659 or simply go to www.ttcandc.com. Subscribe to Danny Houston Podcast, man. Three Two was one of the humblest cats I ever worked with. Just laid back, cool. He did his own, own thing. He's very clever with words, and he had he could change his voice to any tone of music, and, and it's gonna jam. You know, I know Three Two and Snoop Dogg used to hang out together. You know, so it's like he wasn't just a a rapper in Houston that just hung out in Houston rap scene. Three was everywhere, man. Three and Pimp, they was. I gotta give it to them too. Them cats. They just travel all over the globe, and everywhere you go, you will hear something that they didn't sung on that you didn't hear in Houston. So that's how they really, really just forced their career to just blow up because they was moving artists. And that's I tell all the youngsters and everybody in, in music today: if you want to really just blow yourself up, just don't do stuff in Houston. Do stuff everywhere. I try to hit all fifty states and do at least a song with some of the main artists in those states. That helps you. You know, back in the days, we grind. We had to do that. We couldn't just rely on just, you know, uh, social media because it wasn't not. It was word of mouth. You feel me? The gangsters, the streets, the ghetto. To me, that still is one of the powerful outlets to get your music out. It's word of mouth. And in your city. But you got to do a lot of grind and you got to do a lot of things for free. You got to do a lot of things that's going to help you. Don't look at it as, hey, I'm not getting paid for this. You feel me? Look at it as, you know, I'm out here showing the world what I'm capable of doing because you never know who's going to hear it and can take you on the next level. And that's what I did in my career. I just, if you need it, okay, I got you. If you need it, okay, I got you. I wasn't worrying about the money coming up front. I was worried about me getting on something and then it blow up to make my success and to make things happen quickly for me in this industry. Because the industry is off the change. You know, you don't never know who you're going to meet. You never know who's going to hear you. You never know who's going to see you. And you never know what song is going to take you to the next level. What song is going to be your biggest hit. I never would thought one day was going to be that song. Hmm. All the songs I picked when I was dealing with Rex Shop and Jam Down and different, you know, record labels, Suave House, pretty much all of the labels in Houston, I was looking for that number one hit. I was always picking the ones I said, this is going to be the hit. That won't even make the album. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? The song always make the hit is the song that you don't like. Mm. So all my hits that I did out here in Houston, pretty much, I didn't like those hits. I didn't like those songs, but I don't know what the world's going to pick. So now I, it taught me where when I do music, I don't even pick the songs. I give it to either radio or have a radio listening party and let somebody else pick it. Because you, your ear sometimes can get so caught up in what you think is it, and it don't be it. Mm. So now when I do music, I just do a lot of them and hey, let radio people, let strangers hear it, other important people hear it and see their reaction. And that's how I do my music now. Yeah. 
you spoke a little bit about uh about three two you know that was my cousin man can you talk a little bit of mo- a little bit uh just a little bit more about him and like y'all's relationship and what really made him you know the genius that he was you know well three first of all was my friend my partner it wasn't nothing that he asked me for that I wouldn't do and it's vice versa anytime means three hit the stage we both knew our songs whether it was old or new and we were performing you feel me and he was so smart and so clever I used to always call him man you you before your time you a special dude and anywhere I go it was so strange I could go to a studio doing something for me and don't even know three two is in there and three can hear my voice and say yo yo can you stay you know you always yo man can you stay I, I i got something for us i didn't know you was here i said sure and we end up making a hit and it's vice versa he would call me out of the blue sometime three four in the morning yo this three what you doing i said i'm chilling in the lab he said man i'm on my way over there i got something for us and everything that man did for me or uh, we recorded was off the change and i can't say that just for me I'm going to say that for everybody that he touched the mic with in the studio. He's just, he's just had a different voice, a different unique style, and it was just incredible with words. And he, I don't care what vibe it was, he would get with that vibe and make it pop off. And that's when I say, you know, he's on him, besides him and Grandpappy, they don't want to have three names. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, man, you know, they call three the governor. You know, three two, Mister three two, Mister three two, Lord you know. three two. He had yeah, he yeah. had so many rap names. I'm like, man, this boy, and and it all fitted it. So three was real, 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 a, a, a dear partner of mine, man. I, I miss him. He was a real friend. I'm talking about a genuine friend. Never asked for nothing. Never. It just he was humble. He had a big heart. He was just humble. People didn't get a chance to really just sit down to know three as three two. They want to know him as something else, you know. And I used to always tell people, you got to get a chance to know a person's heart before you can judge him on anything. And he was that type of. He didn't get what he really deserved. To me, if you really ask me, he was so unique, so incredible, so smart, and he was so cold with words and and and, and rap as a rapper. You know, he could tell you. He can rap a story. He can, whatever you wanted him to rap. He'd say, "What's the concept? What you know?" And Man, he he get right in it. You know what I'm saying? I think to me he should have been another Tupac. Hmm. For as it's getting paid or for as on they level. You know him, Fat Pat, you know Pimp. It's a lot of them. Hawk, Mo. You know uh, I can name a bunch of them. It's not here. You feel me? That I think really deserve more in their career, and most of those guys was for their time. Yeah, I should sit in the studio with all of them, and they did for their time. And, and, and the ones out here living, like Kiki, like Pokey, like like Paul Wall. You, you feel me? Slim Thug, Bum B. Bum B is one of the greatest because I seen him one time write a rap, read it, bought it up, and throw it in the trash. Went to sleep. Pam said, Bond, you need to get up. It's time to do your verse. Bond go in there and nail it one time, and it's perfect. He don't need a take or nothing. And everybody was in the studio was like, are you serious? Even the engineers was like, I say, that young man is for his time. Hmm. So him, you know, Flip, you know, all of those guys before they time. You know, so it's like, it's so many of them that I've worked with that dudes, music and do album in a day. Uh, D. Gotti, he can write an album in a day. Flip can do an album in a day. Uh, Bomb B can do an album in a day. If Zero can do an album in a day. That's another one for his time, you feel me? So it's like, those cats, you know, is so unique. And I work with so many people like Street Military, uh, KBM Flea, Peace Out, them boys is incredible. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what they say about me, but me as working with them as an artist or as an R&B artist and working with so many people is I see the ones that's incredible, the ones that's for their time and the ones don't really know they before their time. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.